What is important in patient-to-doctor communication, especially in eye surgery or cataract treatment? Why in some cases patient feels frustrated or uncertain after the consultation with the doctor? Or even worse situation when the patient feels okay during the consultation, but when he or she returns to home, again, anxiety, uncertainty and fear comes back and you have no option to ask any more, any more questions. The worst case scenario when after the surgery, the patient gets exactly what he was fearing about. The bad vision, need of glasses or bad vision in a dim light conditions, whatever. Why it is happening and what we can do to avoid that bad case scenarios. Hi there, my name is Oleksii and you are at IOL Advisor channel telling the truth about IOLs. In this video, let me explain you the psychological factors of patient to doctor communication. What can you do as a patient realistically to improve the quality of your treatment? And if you are a doctor, that video will help you to guide your communication with your patient to a more productive way if for whatever reason your consultation goes in a bad direction. Your previous experience and your vision after the surgery. It looks like we have a conflict of interest. Honestly, the only critical part for you. And surprisingly, your doctor wants the same thing. The true story here is very simple. It will highly increase the likelihood of great visual outcomes after the surgery. Let's start from some facts. The problem is, and it's scientifically proven, that ability of healthcare professionals or doctors to explain complicated medical conditions or terminology to the patients decline with age, decline with the years of their professional activity. It is something that is called curse of knowledge. It, is, it happens because any person who is expert, who is doing anything in his or her field of expertise, whatever is it, is it medicine or plumbing or driving or whatever, with age, with years of experience, you get more and more details, more and more content, context in your professional field of expertise. And if you talk to any other person, whatever context you have in your head, you always tend to, let's say, mirror that your person you are talking to has similar context in their particular heads. It's absolutely wrong, but you easily can observe it in everyday life. For example, if you and your partner are um, arguing about something, you have your context and you can blame or, let's say, tell that somebody is doing wrong. But your partner has absolutely different context and is not aware about your context. That's why, for example, in family psychotherapy, a psychotherapist can look um, in general in the picture and help both of you to see the context in which one and other person lives. And virtually same and similar things are happening between patient and a doctor. Doctor has a lot of medical and specific knowledge in his or her head and patient uh, has very limited knowledge because patient is not a doctor, it's obvious. And that's why the patients and the doctor are quite often talking in a different language. So let's start from, from the beginning. As a patient, what about you should talk with your doctor? And thinking about that, let's ask ourselves the first question. Why, for what reason we have to talk to the doctor? And the answer is very simple. First of all, of course, we have to explain what happens prior the visit to the doctor. What was the trigger which guide you to the doctor. You are in front of your doctor, so doctor can prescribe you some diagnostic tests, some uh, analysis, whatever, ask additional questions, and then, theoretically, your job is done, you explained everything. Job of doctor is now to, let's see, to combine all the factors from your, uh, from your story, from the medical tests, and then offer you a treatment plan, perform a treatment, and everybody is happy. Isn't that simple? Well, Looks like simple and it looks like true, but not. But why? Well, the problem is that if it comes to the healthcare, if it comes to your health or health of your beloved ones, you feel a lot of stress, fear and uncertainty because you have a lot of questions. What happened? Why has it happened? Is it possible to be treated? Can my health or health of my relative be returned to normal state? And everything creates a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress during the consultation with a doctor 
and even after the consultation and during all the stage until you get recovered. And basically, patient and that stage during the consultation with the doctor tries to solve the three tasks, tries to resolve the three things, I would say. The first one, what, is, what happened, what can be done, and what results can I expect. Then, task number two, which is, which is related to task number one, is to understand in more details what is happening, how the eye is working, how my vision will be recovering, what happens around my physiology, anatomy, the function of my body, etc. A lot of things. And third, the most important, is that particular doctor is good enough? Is it professional one who can really treat, my, uh, treat me with the best optimal care, with the best practices, and, and he will not make any mistake to my body and to my treatment? The true story here is very simple. You are not able to solve two out of the three tasks. You are able to get the answer only to the task number one. What happened, what could be done, what you can expect. Regarding the task number two, more or less to such an extent, few words you can get from your doctor. And task number three, it's honestly almost impossible for you as a patient to judge and to justify if the doctor is good or bad. Why? Simply because, first of all, regarding task number two, your doctor has years of years of trainings, studying and practice. So it's a lot of experience inside of the doctor's head. And if you compare your field of expertise, you have a lot of expertise in your particular case. Try to imagine somebody, me for example, that your experience, your knowledge will be transferred like a click of the button to my head. It's impossible. Same story with the medicine. It's a lot, a lot of things around and virtually it's not possible for you to get all the information your doctor has in your head, in his or her head. Coming back to professionalism of the doctor. Most of you are not doctors. And even if you are a doctor, you are not an ophthalmologist or an ophthalmic surgeon. And that's why it's absolutely impossible for you to understand the professionalism of a doctor in any way. And honestly, the only critical part for you in this uh, equation, I would say, is to build a trust, to feel emotionally. Are you able to trust your doctor? And the task of your doctor is to create the trust. It's not always possible because we are defocusing. During this uh, conversation of doctor to patient, we tend to defocus from what really matters. And matters is two things. What your vision after the surgery expected to be from your point of view as a patient, because only patient, only you, is the only expert in the world about your particular vision needs, your previous experience and your vision after the surgery. And second, you as a patient trying to understand how it will be treated, uh, what's be, uh, what's background behind different solutions, uh, why your vision is blurry, etc. And it's the focus of doctor from his professional doctor's role to educator role, which is not the case for the doctor. It's not his job to educate you. My opinion, the doctor should educate to very limited extent. Just give a basic knowledge because time of a doctor is limited. And uh, as I said, you have to be focused on what really matters. And for doctors, it's the best idea to have um, a dedicated set of links for the patients to, to read about or to watch a video or so whatever, which will be sent pure to the visit or after the visit for self-education. It's the best way. If doctor doesn't have it, you as a patient have an ability to, to Google or to ask ChatGPT or Gemini or any other artificial intelligence. But here you should be very careful because in uh, on a web, as you know, or even a ChatGPT or artificial intelligence, intelligence services are not able to give you to guarantee that the quality of information is really good. So you have to critically think on what you are reading, listening, what are the sources. And based on that, uh, I suggest you to create your picture of what is happening. Well, I hope it is clear and I'm really interested in what you are thinking about that part of doctor to patient communication. What, you, what do you think as a patient? What is important in communication with your doctor? Please share with me your experience 
either bad or good in the comments below and I will try to respond to give you some suggestion to improve your quality of communication in the future and maybe to help other people to, to have a better and productive communication with the doctors. Thank you for that. And by the way, if you still not subscribed to my channel, please support me by giving me a subscription here in the corner. Please switch on the notification and give me a thumbs up. It supports me and helps me to bring you more knowledge and more trustful information about intraocular lenses. Moving forward, it looks like we have a conflict of interest between patient and a doctor because patient wants to know more, doctor wants to treat you, but at the end of the day there is no conflict of interest because you as a patient are very interested in the best outcomes and the best possible treatment. And surprisingly, your doctor wants the same thing. The problem is that you're approaching that goal from a different angles, from a different perspectives. And what could be done in this domain to improve the quality of your conversation with the doctor and how to find this common, uh, common zone of the common language talk? Um, well, I can give you a simple example on how I work with a patient during my personal consultation and it really works. And it's something when I share with the doctors, they really value and that's why I'm trying to share my knowledge with you. The secret is the preparation for the communication with the doctor before the actual consultation. How does it work in my case? When somebody is booking my consultation and I always ask her first of all to describe the particular case situation, to explain previous visual experience, visual acuity if uh, the medical data are available and what is more important, um, let's say visual expectation after the surgery, what you would like to get after the surgery. It is very important part because at that stage you start to think, you start to reflect yourself and thinking what exactly you would like to get after the surgery because we are using our vision in everyday life and we never thinking how do we use it. We just use our eyes and that's it. Now, but in terms of intraocular lens selection and first of all type of the lens we select and a particular model, it's very important to focus on uh, visual acuity at different distances. What exactly you need at that distance, at near, intermediate and far. And which lightning conditions do you work or do you leave. What makes you happy in your everyday life? Because it's a very important factor in satisfaction after the surgery. Because as an example, sometimes doctor asking you what is the most common task which you are performing and you would like to be spectacle free. And for you it could be something in near vision like I want to be doing something without glasses at near. But you forget that despite you spend let's say 8 hours a day doing something at near, you enjoy, I don't know, hiking, yachting, flying, whatever, where far vision is absolutely critical and that moment makes you happy in your everyday life not that near task where you can use the glasses. Or maybe you're right, you need a glasses-free ability to see up close. So it depends. It's important for you to think what are your visual expectations after the surgery. And honestly, it is the only one and the most critical factor in communication with your surgeon. Nothing else. Don't try to be educated by a doctor because you can read everything. Don't try to double check would it be painful or doctor is professional or not, etc. It doesn't make sense. The most important for you is to create this emotional contact between you as a human and a doctor as a human. For doctor to see in you a person who wants his help to be spectacle free or to be, let's say, able to see at far distance with the sharpest details possible or whatever. So visual needs after the surgery are the most important in your everyday life. And in order to select the intraocular lens properly, doctor have to ask you some questions and uh, you have to answer these questions, you have to be ready to answer these questions. And basically many clinics using special questionnaires like well-known Doctor's Dell questionnaire which is used in my automated IOL questionnaire on my website ioladvisor.com. You can find the link to the questionnaire in the video below and the idea behind it is that you can answer the questions of that questionnaire and my website automatically will calculate the score of your answers and give you a direction, a guideline and which direction you have to, let's say, go to discuss what type of eye will to discuss with your doctor. And then with that answers, you can get it on your email or and, you, and on your screen as well, you can come to your doctor with that results and show it to him and to her that, well, I have these questions, I have my answers and my recommendation. Let's discuss, is it um, valuable for my case? 
is it clinically and medically possible for me to have that type of eye oil? Do you have this type of eye oils? And is it really a good choice for me or not? And why? And it will help you to focus with your doctor on the most important part. It's your visual experience after the surgery. It is only one thing which makes sense to talk with the doctor. So there is only one and simple take home message from the video. Talking to your doctor, try to defocus from medical aspects and uh, evaluation of professionalism of your doctor. Try to focus on your visual experience prior the case before something that triggers your visit to the doctor and focus on your visual needs and your expectations after the surgery, including your current occupation, your current lifestyle, and probably try to think about the future. How would you would like to use your vision in the future? Because you are changing your lens to intra to intraocular lens, to artificial lens, only once in your lifetime. And the type and the model of the intraocular lens you will select for your surgery is something which will form your visual outcomes for the rest of your life. Focusing yourself on your visual needs and expectation and focusing your doctor in what exactly matters for you will highly Im increase the likelihood of great visual outcomes after the surgery. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!